Hello and welcome back to our playthrough of Lost Kingdoms 2. In today's episode we are going into the Ruldo Forest, home of the elusive elf creatures, some of my absolute favourites in the game. Um, so we're actually going to visit this place twice, as you can tell it's heavily uh, leaf based and I believe I have not edited my deck yet to fully reflect the new cards I've got. So. What we're going to aim to do is to put each of the brand new um, Lizard Men cards in to show off what I think is a very fun combination attack, uh, as well as show off some of the new cards we got from the Kendari Fortress. Uh, I no longer need the Mecha Pult, I don't need to cheese anything from a distance, but I do want to keep the Stone Golem, it's really useful on this stage. Um, so that should do for our deck. I'm not heavily fire based, but as long as I've got some cards with neutral coverage, I shouldn't have too many issues in the Ruldo Forest. Um, after we go to the Ruldo Forest, we're going to go to the card shop and visit Jarvi to actually start improving some of our cards. We're roughly halfway through the main storyline there's quite a lot of side quests to do but it's about time that we'll have the experience so as you can tell i've got some cards in my in my deck that i can't quite cast fully yet um death being a very powerful card but at the same time a very expensive one so straight away i'm just going to try and prepare my lizard men move now this card here that i'm about to start attacking is an elf these guys are pretty good there we go they die in one shot very weak to fire very weak to fire as usual but especially so um, on this try and dodge their attacks they do tend to try and run away from you. Um, they are programmed specifically to avoid melee conflict as much as possible. However, this also means that you can uh, trap them in a corner and make them and make them quite sad. Come back. Nope. Now, obviously, I could just one-shot uh, her using the Red Lizard. However, that doesn't let me... Uh, that doesn't let me use the meme. So, uh, as you can see, all of my cards have turned red. And this will unleash a combination attack. Where every single Lizardman attacks in one go. Once you use a combo, you actually use up every uh, card in your hand that's as part of the combo. Um, so that circular attack there is the effect of death. Uh, death is particularly useful because he allows you to... Um, oh no. Death allows you to sometimes just instantly kill things. Uh, very good. It also has 360 degree coverage. Mandragora card. That's actually quite useful. We're not going to use it for the trap aspect. Uh, sorry, to clarify, it's a monster that goes and lives in the ground and then uh, you can set it up as a trap and when people run into it it screams. But we're going to actually use it as a paperweight in part of this run. A really weird man wearing a mask. We had better go and say hello to him when we get the opportunity. So we just run along here, um, gonna get another demon hound approach us. And this is where we want to use a sandstorm for the wide range. Uh, the demon hound should dodge sideways. There we go. And there's another elf up ahead. Elves tend to be fairly weak against the death card provided it's not the slowest thing in the world. There we 
go, that's dead. Uh, there should be a red fairy hidden in this tree. I'm just going to quickly grab some healing here. Dryad, that's a really useful card. If, like me, you particularly like going for elf builds, um, the Dryad really helps to buff them. Uh, you can see her up ahead. First of all, we try and get rid of the elf. Elves being absolutely terrifying. Dryad moves very slowly and makes it a really easy card to hit. Um, but we're here primarily for this. When we activate this strange broadcasting beacon device, it turns on these glowing plate pads. Um, you might remember them from the runestone caverns. Um, this essentially means that my transforms are now better. So when I turn into the stone golem here, and I walk across this pad, I start to do whatever the hell this thing is. Um, and I get to clear up a secret path. Uh, really, really useful. Now, that's a mic in it. I don't want to trigger that. Not with this, anyway. There we go. As you can tell, leaps up in the air. It's just another one of those trap-type creatures. Now, what we're going to find up ahead is yet another elf. Very popular with these. Aha, land a slow on an elf. Spank her with the ghoul. We're good. Um, what's coming up ahead is actually one of the tougher battles you get in the game. Uh, enemy runestone masters tend to be relatively tough opponents. So I definitely want some backup for this. As you can tell, this guy, I'm going to go up and have a chat with him. And he's going to say something about Izamat. Now, at this stage of the game, I have no idea what Izamat is supposed to be. He hates getting Storm Pagans, like the majority of Runestone Masters. Um, oh, that's a weird hitbox. I'm going to uh, aim to hit him now with a Sleeping Gas. Just a nice wide range effect. Sometimes gives the uh, debuff. Run away. Dark Raven, as expected. Come back. Hit him with the Dragon Knight. Um, now I've killed him. I get his runestone. Now, we've been told in this game that runestones are pretty rare. Or at least authentic runestones are pretty rare. So at this point, you begin to think... How does he have a runestone? Why is he so strange? Why does he have so many masks on his belt? We will get answers, because we're going for the good ending in this game. So I am going to have to meet him and all of his friends. Other than that, we are largely done with this um, area. For our first visit. We'll actually come back a third time. Uh, but... Not for a little while. Just going to run past the elves for now. I've got the kill I really want. And the level will actually end when we try to pass through this area. One moment, young lady. That is an interesting bobber you have there. I wonder if you know what it is. It is the one true runestone, the runestone of queens. May I see it? Now you're not really afraid of an old woman, are you? Well, perhaps you have your reasons. I am called Gerd. I am but a simple old woman, but I know a thing or two about life. 
Why don't you tell me what's troubling you, my child? Ah, I see. Your mother gave you that runestone on the day you were abandoned. Of course you don't want anyone to touch it. And there must be many out there who would try to take it from you. Nevertheless, it is the Queen's runestone. We must go to Alanja and meet with the Queen. It may be that you will learn something of your family there. But you must not delay. The Kendari are preparing to lay siege to the castle of Alanja. Will you take some advice from an old woman before you go? Not everyone in this world is evil. Someday, we will know someone that even you can trust, Peregrine Face. So that's Gerd. Uh, Gerd's actually a character from the first... from the first game. Um, and she's actually one of our friends. Uh, she runs a special place um, up in the mountains where you can go and prove your might. Come on. Elf, elf, elf. Ah, my knits. That's unfortunate. We don't particularly want them. Um, although she has said that the main story is very important, uh, it's not. We're going straight back into Ruldo Forest. Uh, this time we're just primarily going to run through and try and dodge everything. Simply put, because behind where Gerd was standing, there were actually some very useful items. So, we want them. It also unlocks a new level. So as you can tell, the pad is still active, and now they're active across the world map. If you consider things like uh, Mario, it's very similar to how you can activate the switches in their uh, switch houses and so on. Instead, what's going to happen here is we're going to get attacked by Cockatrice. The same monsters that Red Fairy told us about. Now, these are actually particularly dangerous if you get hit by them. They will turn you to stone. And that can end up just getting you uh, killed. So the best thing to do is to try to not let them surround you where possible. There's a Mandragora hopping about, which we're going to try and avoid. That's a Demon Hound. And that's a Rafflesia. Uh, the Fleecia is essentially a version of the Bank Trap. Okay. Oh, no. I don't want to get hit by this. I'm going to use the Ghoul here to try and stun it a few times. Oh. For some reason, I thought I still had a charge of that Ghoul card. There you go, that's two of them down. These actually serve as the level boss. Um, I don't want to use that card. These two should be able to deal with it. Oh, Archer Tree, come on. Oh no, I thought I had range to get past that. Regardless, where's that? There it is. Okay, and then this will be able to just kill the cockatrice, and that will be the level done. I'm going to get a particularly bad rating here, I think. Very sloppy play another mic knit. 
Uh, we have now got a sacred battle arena. But before we go there, we're going to need to visit Kadishu. Now, there are two main spots I want to go in Kadishu. Currently, I want to go to Jarvis' house and then I want to go to the card shop. I want to sell some of my junk. Then I'm going to pick up a couple of important things from the center of Kadishu. I get given the Carbuncle, which is uh, quite a useful defensive card. The nice thing about this is I don't have to run all the way through the centre of Kadishu to actually get my uh, my cards uh, sold at the card shop. Now, here you'll notice I've now got a better selection from when I visited the first time. Um, you tend to get given better cards every time you unlock a new map. However, I don't actually want to buy any of these. Uh, the only really useful ones are the Rebus, uh, and I can get another copy of that at another point. So, don't particularly need that. But what I do want is the upgrade function. Any of the cards that have been uh, highlighted are now liable for an upgrade, which means that they can become much better. So here I can create the Wraith, which is a great weapon card, or I can create the Undead Knight. Uh, as it happens, I have enough XP for both, so I'm going to start to show the skeleton tree. The Undead uh, Knight is pretty good. It's uh, quite low in terms of its health, but it's very fast. What's also being pretty decent in terms of its AI. So it ends up being quite a good reactive unit. The Wraith's quite a tough weapon card to use well, but it's quite useful for having lifesteal on it. Here I can upgrade my Lizardman to any other type of Lizardman, but I don't want to do that. And equally I can upgrade the Draconid back into Lizardman. Not helpful, but eventually it can turn into a... Eventually it can turn into a, a Dragon, so just being a Draconid. Still quite a lot of XP needed on the Ghoul turning into the Banshee, so I think we leave it there. Meanwhile, we start to sell junk. Now, the Demon Hound's not going to be particularly helpful. The goal here is going to be to try and hit approximately uh, 600, uh, sorry, 3000 gold. I'm going to keep one of them. I'll be able to buy this back later in the game, but I think I should keep it for now. One thousand gold should be enough for now. I'll be able to get some more quite soon. That's going to do it for this episode. Um, in the next episode, we are going to try to sequence break the game briefly by attaining flight before map 3. Uh, this is possible owing to a special type of card that you can just obtain, but it really helps. It means I don't have to revisit as many stages later on. And we're going to do that by actually going into an area we couldn't get earlier, but we will be able to as soon as we enter the Fossil Boneyard. So that's going to finish this episode for today. So once again, I've been Scissors Lizards, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Lost Kingdoms 2. <laughs>